I really enjoy seeing videos of other experimenters, electronics labs, and workbenches. So I figured that I would do a similar video uh, to just show where I shoot these uh, experiments and uh, where I do my work. So just pan across my general work area and then I'll go through the larger pieces of equipment in more detail. You probably recognize the bench there with the white ESD pads. And the white pegboard background. Sweeping over here to the left. Some areas that I don't think have been on camera yet. This is where I keep the majority of my components and trusty fire extinguisher, which I've never had to use, and vacuum tubes and wire and books and chemicals and miscellaneous pieces. Some equipment that I very seldom use over here. My cables, alligator clips, and BNCs, and banana plugs, that sort of thing. And then within arm's reach, the equipment that I use most often. And over here, panning back to the left, are shelves where I keep equipment that uh, I'm either restoring or have restored or things that are still in process. I keep my integrated circuits in the uh, cabinet right there, my hobby vices. Then again, equipment down in here that is uh, waiting in the queue to be addressed. And then I keep my soldering supplies, uh, jeweler screwdrivers, X-Acto knives, things of that nature, uh, screwdrivers, uh, diagonal clips, needle nose pliers, and then behind where I sit, although I usually stand, uh, down here, I keep wires, uh, you know, spools of wire, extra power cords, things like that. All right, so let's take a closer look at the equipment that I use uh, very often. Here we are a little closer to where I actually stand when I do my work. Here we have the uh, classic Tektronics 465B, which has really been workhorse of my uh, of my bench up until fairly recently uh, but I still use it a lot it's just you know it's just classic uh, BK precision model 5491b uh, bench multimeter this is one of their nicer bench meters it's all right it's uh, it does what I need it to do it's uh, nothing great. It's not an Agilent or a Tektronix or a Fluke uh, or a Keithley, uh, but uh, you know, it's a pretty solid meter. Uh, above that, we have a B BK Precision 1823A, uh, two and a half gigahertz uh, universal counter, which is uh, a, a very nice piece of equipment, actually. Um, and then panning over a little bit more to the right, we have uh, a stack of this uh, 250 series Tektronix equipment from probably the early 80s vintage, I imagine. Uh, this down here is a uh, function generator that goes to 3 megahertz. This one goes to 2 megahertz. Here's a frequency counter that goes up to 100 megahertz, which is just a, just a tank. I mean, I love this thing. This is my go-to frequency counter. It takes a lot of abuse and uh, retains its accuracy. And then finally here, saw a, a digital multimeter, a CDM250, which gets used fairly infrequently now, but it still does have its, its uses. Uh, and then, of course, over here, a, a, an isolation transformer and panning around just a little bit further. 
a uh, Rigol DS1054 digital oscilloscope. It goes up to 50 megahertz. Above that is a Grundig general coverage receiver. My uh, soldering irons, a, a Heiko and, and a Weller, which uh, do just, just fine. Heath kit. There we go. Heath kit vacuum tube voltmeter. Uh, you know, very simple circuit, but gets the job done. And what's really nice is the very large meter face. And then just panning around a little bit more. Uh, Heath kit capacitor checker uh, that uh, tests leakage up to uh, 600 volts. A BK uh, precision function generator uh, model E 200D which, uh, you know, again, one of the, one of the classics and uh, use it in a variety of, of applications. Down here we have our uh, power banks. Uh, so this is a, uh, uh, a cheap but, uh, but good enough uh, triple DC power supply that I've uh, kind of modified a bit to uh, in include multi-turn pots. Uh, down, down below here, here and here are two BK Precision model 1653 variable and isolated AC power supplies. And those get used a lot. They really obviate the need for a, an, an isolation transformer and variac at the same time. So I use those a lot. Uh, and then over here, just a, uh, an old, but again, talk about a tank, uh, Kepco DC power supply that uh, ranges between zero and 40 or 50 volts and somewhere around half an amp output. Uh, a couple of fluke meters. Uh, this is a, uh, a fluke uh, model 1810A uh, bench multimeter. Again, old design, uh, not auto ranging, but uh, you know, just really takes a licking and keeps on ticking, maintains its accuracy, and uh, you know, it's impossible to kill. It was a very successful design for fluke. And then over here, uh, you know, you can you can see my vacuum tube voltmeter addiction, which seems to uh, show no sign of abating a uh, variac uh, auto transformer i should say up here uh, an, an older heath kit uh, uh, 250 megahertz frequency counter swr bridge some other things like that down here uh, a bk precision uh, 20 megahertz uh, analog scope which used to get used a lot uh, but but rarely gets used these days and uh, then down here is a project of mine a, uh, a fluke uh, bench multimeter very nice multimeter again from probably the late 70s vintage uh, this works i i picked it up for oh geez maybe 20 or 30 dollars it works it's accurate it has some thermal issues that i need to run down and it's just full of tantalum capacitors which you know talking to some other people i believe they're more or less ticking time bombs so there's there's some work that needs to be done on that but uh hey we'll probably end up making a video on those issues at some point uh, all right so what i didn't address were my bank of multimeters uh, so you know here on the left this has uh, made uh, this has been seen in several videos this is a uh, DERE 5000 LCR meter with the modified Kelvin clips. Uh, very nice meter. It gets used a lot on my bench. Very solid. Holds its accuracy. It's easy to recalibrate. Um, just really fond of that. Probably my favorite multimeter ever, Amprobe AM 160A. It's a little dated now, but just a, a very, very nice meter. Again, uh, holds its accuracy, and uh, just just an all-around great great meter. Uh, I actually like the Ampro meters in general. This is a, an AM570, quote unquote, industrial multimeter. Again, it it takes a lot of abuse, and uh, and does just fine. Uh, I have the Dave Jones EEV blog rebranded Bryman meter, which has uh, rapidly become a favorite as well as uh, well as a BK Precision. 2709 uh, auto ranging multimeter. Those are really my, my go-to meters. As you go left, the uh, multimeters get used much less frequently. 
there's a little X tech that I, I bought uh, in a misguided attempt to help Radio Shack from going out of business. And then, uh, you know, an older BK non auto ranging multimeter and then some uh, uh, other, uh, other cheaper meters and analog meters as well. The uh, Atlas uh, instrument here, the, uh, which is a semiconductor analyzer, is just a brilliant piece of, uh, of kit that really saves a lot of time for, from looking up pinouts on the internet for different uh, semiconductors. And then over here we have a uh, Heath kit uh, solid state grid dip oscillator, which uh, I predict will make an appearance in a series of videos rather soon. Up on the top shelf, we uh, we have our uh, Lucky Tiki to uh, keep the uh, blue smoke in all the equipment. And uh, so far, he's done a pretty good job at that. We have a bank of cheap Chinese multimeters. Uh, two of them have made an appearance in the, the videos on measuring ground conductance. The uh, one furthest to the left here, uh, this gentleman, is uh, it's an all right meter. What I like about it is that it will plug into my Linux laptop and I can automate measurements so I can log measurements. Uh, next up here, I have uh, you know several breadboards that contain projects in various states of completion. And then finally over here, I've got all the, the clips, alligator clips and other types of clips that go on to DMM probes. Uh, and then just, you know, kind of Finally, over here, I have the tools that I use most often, my small crescent wrenches and long pliers, needle nose pliers, my uh, Heiko flush cut pliers and uh, wire stripper. And then up here, I keep at arm's length all my DMM cables, which are mostly uh, Pro Master probes, but uh, also some of the rebranded Bryman leads as well. And uh, alligator clips which uh, you can just, you know, never have too many of. It's, uh, that's just a truism and really don't need to talk about that anymore. Underneath the uh, work area, which I won't show, I've got uh, a couple of tube testers. Well, might as well bring those out just to show. So the first one is really my go-to tube tester. It's just a very simple, uh, very compact Sencor TC, what, 142. I think this was their last tube tester that actually included tubes inside. After that, I believe they went all solid state. Uh, but I've just recently updated that and re re replaced a couple leaky capacitors. And uh, it's just a, a great tube tester for testing for shorts and emission. And rarely do I need to, to go above that. And finally, I've got uh, a Hickok 600A, uh, which probably dates from the mid-1950s. This is a, a very nice instrument that I have, uh, I got just freshly calibrated. It does the job on, on anything that, that I've actually really needed. Tube testers like vacuum tube voltmeters are things that can very easily develop an addiction to, and uh, they're just shiny and, well, you get the picture. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my work area. As I said, I just, uh, I really enjoy seeing what other people have put together for their workspaces. So if you have comments or suggestions, uh, questions, please leave them down below. We'd love to hear them. And we'll be back soon with uh, additional videos on... Uh, different topics in electronics. Thanks a lot.